What are the major components of Carnot refrigeration? Well, you're going to have an evaporator and the fluid or substance, some refrigerant is going to come in the evaporator and go out. Hmm, what happens to the refrigerant in the evaporator? By the name, you know it evaporates. So it goes from some low quality phase to some high quality phase. For the Carnot, this does not come out saturated vapor, but it comes out at state, let's call this state one, and the quality at state one is higher than the quality at state four. But in the Carnot, both the inlet and the outlet to the evaporator are two-phase. After the evaporator goes into a compressor, true? From the compressor, what happens? What's the purpose of the compressor? Boost the pressure, boost the pressure. So now you're at the high pressure part, high pressure. What do you think is the, if it's a Carnot, you picked the inlet to the compressor, and the compressor is completely reversible such that it's perfectly saturated vapor. Now, that's a nice dream, but that's, that's the Carnot, okay? So it's saturated vapor coming out of the compressor. Then it goes to a, what does it go to? Condenser. And then what comes out of the condenser typically is going to be completely saturated liquid, but for the Carnot, it is, and it is, uh, it is the same. It's saturated liquid. Whoops, I wanted to change color there. Saturated liquid. And then after the condenser, that's going to be state three coming inlet to the condenser state two. What happens? What do we put it into? We put it into basically a turbine, a work producing device based on a, the drop in pressure and the expansion of the refrigerant. This thing doesn't exist in practice, but you bring in a saturated liquid and then expand it into a two-phase mixture. It doesn't exist in practice, but it exists on paper. Okay. So this turbine produces some work. So we have some work out of the turbine, work into the compressor, some Q, whoops, into the evaporator, and Q out of the condenser. So two major heat transfers, two major work transfers. You talk about a high pressure side. This is the high pressure side. This is the low pressure side. True? So uh, pressure at two and pressure at three are the same. Pressure at one and pressure at four are the same. So how do we analyze this system? I would encourage you to make a table of all the properties and then walk around it. So maybe your state, one, two, three, four. Pressure, whatever units, bar, KPA, something, put your pressure. The pressure at 2 and 3 are going to be the same. The pressure at 1 and 4 are going to be the same. Then the temperature. Now, what about the temperature? If you look at saturated vapor and saturated liquid and pressure at 2 and 3 are the same. So is the temperature at 2 and 3 the same? Is the temperature at 2 and 3? They are the same. Temperature at two and three are the same, true? Yeah. yeah. How about the temperature at one and four? Well, it's a two-phase mixture at one, it's a two-phase mixture at four, and the pressure at one and the pressure at four are the same, so same. Isn't that interesting? So the temperatures are also the same. So uh, just like you had the high pressure and the high low pressure, you also have high temperature, low temperature. Which one is higher temperature? Is, uh, is T, so we, we agree that T2 is equal to T3, but is that higher than uh, T1, which is equal to T4? Which, where's the high temperature? Two and three. This is the high, high temperature. This is the low temperature. 
exactly right. And then we can put in something like we're really interested in enthalpy, we're interested in entropy, put the units kilojoules per kilogram, kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin, and then you might want to put some descriptor or some quality, quality in there. And you might want to put a little, how, how are these states fixed? How, how do I know what state one is? How do I know what state two is? True? Well, the way, it's a little backwards, but state two seems to be the easiest to be fixed, doesn't it? Two is saturated vapor. And you could have started the numbering system at one, I mean there too, but let's stay with the book. They started the numbering system where inlet to the compressor is one. So this one, it, it's saturated vapor at the um, pressure of the com condenser pressure, or sometimes they'll give you the temperature of the, of the condenser. Okay. And then it's also saturated liquid, so that fixes or helps us fix state three, true? In our notation, is this going to be H of G and S of G and this one for quality? And is this going to be H of F and S of F and zero for quality? All evaluated at that high pressure, true? Yeah. Now the harder ones are state one and state four, probably to sketch a diagram. So let's sketch a temperature entropy diagram, put on a dome and put a box inside the dome because Carnot on a TS diagram is a box. <laughs> it's, a, it's a rectangle, okay? And it fits under the dome where, what is this state number two? What is this state number three? Maybe that's why they numbered it like that, huh? So that the upper right corner of the box is state two, and it makes sense that way. So <clears throat> this is saturated vapor, saturated liquid. So what's happening here? You have the heat coming out in the condenser. Then you have the work coming out of the turbine. Then you have from four to one the heat going in in the evaporator and the work going in in the compressor from one to two. Okay, I pause, I stop. Does that TS diagram make sense? What are we saying about this compressor? It's reversible and no heat transfer or adiabatic. Hence, it's isentropic compression. Same with this turbine, no heat transfer, reversible, hence it's isentropic expansion. S is equal to a constant. So that's why S3 is equal to S4. That's one reason I wanted to sketch this diagram. It shows you, ah, if I want to figure out state one, what really fixes state one is knowing the pressure at one and the entropy at one, S because S1 is equal to S2. So this S2 is equal to S1. How does that help us get the quality X1? Well, quality is going to be S1 minus SF at that lower uh, uh, pressure um, in the evaporator, SG minus SF. Notice um, those saturated liquid, saturated vapor entropies are four state ones pressure, the pressure in the evaporator. They're not equal to this SG right here. That SG is for the high pressure. True? So you can calculate then the quality at state one. Knowing now the entropy and the quality, I finally get the enthalpy at state one. Enthalpy at state one, is that equal to H of F plus quality at state one, H, F, G? Thumbs up if you agree. This is all like you started. You had the question. Hey, this chapter seems like a lot of review. I'm glad it looks like most of you are following this pretty well, right? Doesn't this look like a lot of review? If it's not a lot of review, then you have a little learning to do, right? Okay. So that's how you get H1. 
Likewise, same thing. This gives you S4 because S3 is isentropic expansion through the turbine that's state 4. And then you get the quality at 4 and the enthalpy at 4 using the very similar, very similar equations. True? Okay, so you get these filled out. Once I have my, my sketch, my illustration, know where my states are, know what the components are between the states, what the flow looks like, where the heat is being picked up in the cycle, where it's being rejected, where work is coming in, work coming out. I have a great TS diagram. I have a great table of properties. I can finally analyze this system. And things that you might be asked for is, oh, given an M dot, true? Mass flow rate. Given an M dot, what is the uh, cooling? I mean, I'm really interested in what is the rate of cooling in the evaporator? How many kilowatts of cooling do I get? Well, that would be the mass flow rate of the refrigerant in the loop times that enthalpy change from the first law around the evaporator, H1 minus H4. How many people agree? Another question, why? How much work do I have to provide? What is the W dot net for the cycle. Well, it's going to be what goes in to drive the compressor minus you get a little bit out of the turbine for Carnot. True? So the net power needed to drive it is that. That's equal to the same M dot times. Then for the compressor, is that going to be H2 minus H1? And then for the turbine, and this is always tricky because the negative sign is here. So for the turbine, I want a positive workout. It'll be H3 minus H4. How many people agree? Thumbs up if you agree. Not as many thumbs up as, okay, we got a double thumbs up compensating. So it looks like it's it. Does anybody have a question about that? Do you see it? Okay, good, good. And so you can check to find out. You know, make sure as you work through these numbers, look at your signs and everything else. Okay, this is making sense. And then often coefficient of performance, I like to just put COP. I know the book must use gamma or beta. I even forget what this book uses. Gamma for a heat pump or gamma for a beta for a heat pump. I, gamma for the re refrigeration or beta for the refrigeration. It's just one more thing to remember. Why not COP? It's pretty easy to remember. Hmm, COP must stand for something. How about coefficient of performance? My mind likes easy things to remember. So coefficient of performance for a refrigeration system, that's going to be how much cooling I was able to achieve over the net power added to the cycle. Now somebody says, I learned, I studied Carnot refrigeration already. And what we found was that this Q dot in the evaporator is equal, uh, divided by Q dot net. That works as well. True? And that Q dot net is Q dot in the evaporator minus, or I'm sorry, Q dot, the Q dot net is equal to Q dot rejected in the condenser minus Q dot picked up in the evaporator. Okay, true? See, I have a, let me scroll up a little bit if I can. This is what's being rejected in that condenser. This is what's being picked up in the evaporator. I have too long a subscript on this. Just put C and E. Q dot C for heat reject, rate of heat rejection in the condenser. Q dot E, rate of heat addition in the evaporator. So that's what Q dot net is. And then somebody else says, but you know what? We studied that, and we found the coefficient of performance for refrigeration cycles to temperature low divided by temperature high minus temperature low. How many people remember this equation? Couple. True? It seems like they're not going to be consistent. Either you're going to go kind of like use this equation here, or you're going to start using enthalpies. 
And if you use enthalpies, you're going to get some ratio for the COP, but it sure doesn't look like it's going to be consistent with just TL over TH minus TL. But it is. True? It is. Right? How many people remember doing a calc like that and then saying, wow, this really does work? It's consistent. 